Hi, this is Kevin from Mathsaurus, and in this video we're going to look at the solutions to questions 21 to 25 of the Junior Kangaroo from 2019. That's the follow-on round to the Junior Maths Challenge for students that have done really well in that paper. But I actually don't think you should watch this video because I've taken all of the questions from the Junior Kangaroo from 2019 as well as the Junior Olympiad from 2019 and put them into a totally free online course. So you can go over to that online course by clicking at the link in the description below and you can work through all of these questions one at a time and then watch my video solutions. I've also got a totally free course over there going through the Junior Maths Challenges from 2020 and 2021 if you haven't already seen that and I'll put that in the link, that link in the description below as well. Um, if you haven't already taken the Junior Maths Challenge, the best place to start would be with the Junior Maths Challenge papers and then go on to the Kangaroo and the Olympiad papers once you're ready for them. In question 21, Ellis's Eel Emporium contains a large tank holding three different types of eel, called electric eels, moray eels and freshwater eels. And a notice on the tank reads as follows, all of the eels are electric eels except 12 of them, all of the eels are moray eels except 14, and all of the eels are freshwater eels except 16, and we want to know how many eels there are in the tank. Um, so fairly clear that there's some amount of algebra that will be useful in this question, and one of the things that we talk about in the Go for Gold in Math Challenges course is that you know when we're um, doing these algebraic questions, the easiest thing to start with is just to try and make x the answer to the question. So if I just let x be the number of eels in the tank, okay, um, then the number of electric eels, well, all but 12 of them are electric eels, so there are going to be x minus 12 electric eels. Um, all but 14 are moray eels, so x minus 14 will be moray eels, and x minus 16 of them will be freshwater eels. Okay, um, So uh, we want to know uh, how many uh, eels are there um, in the tank in total? Well, we must have uh, x minus 12 plus x minus 14 plus x minus 16. That's all of the individual types of eels together. When I add all those together, I must just get the total number of eels in the tank, which is x. So simplifying the left-hand side, I get 3x uh, minus 42 uh, equals x. So I've got 2 two x equals 42, subtracting x from each side and adding 42. And so the total number of eels must be x equals 21. Now, um, actually, when you look at the official solutions for this uh, paper, they've gone a slightly um, harder route, I think. And I think maybe they designed this question to try to get this uh, technique to, uh, to appear, because it's one that happens a lot. So let's just have a quick look at another way of doing it, which is to say, let's call them E, M, and F. Right. This means that the number of moray plus freshwater eels is 12, the number of electric plus freshwater is 14, and the number of electric plus moray must be 16. And you get this form that appears quite often in math challenge questions here, where you've got this kind of symmetry to it all. And if you add all of these uh, three equations together, on the left-hand side, you get two lots of E plus two lots of F plus two lots of M. Um, and adding the 12, 14, and 16 together, uh, you get 42. So the total of E, F, and M is a half of that, which is 21. And then that's the total of all the eels in the tank, which gives us another way of doing it. But to do it that way, you have to introduce three different variables and have this kind of sort of spot this symmetric form and do simultaneous equations. Much easier, I think, just to call the total x and write down this equation. In question 22, Geraint always cycles to work, leaving at 8 a.m. every morning. When he averages 15 kilometers per hour, he arrives 10 minutes late. But when he averages 30 kilometers per hour, he arrives 10 minutes early. And we want to know what speed should he average to arrive on time. Okay, so we're obviously going to use here the um, formula speed equals distance over time or some rearrangement of it. And uh, let's call S, D, and T the actual uh, speed which is the answer to the question here, the distance, which is his actual distance to work, and t, which is the time that it would um, take him to, uh, to to travel if he's uh, if he's arriving on time, right? Because by doing that, I can say, okay, when he arrives ten minutes late, that means 
he has done t plus 10. Or actually, rather than t plus 10, because the units are hours here, I should think of 10 minutes as being one sixth of an hour and say that when he arrives 10 minutes late, his time is t plus uh, one sixth. And so similarly, when he arrives 10 minutes early, his time will be t minus one sixth. Okay. But the distance is always the same, and it's just the speed that changes. Okay, so um, so we know uh, that this uh, distance. Um, uh, so in the first one, 15 kilometers per hour, he arrives 10 minutes late. So we've got 15 equals d over uh, t plus one sixth. Um, perhaps it would be better to write this as distance equals speed times time and write 15 times t plus one sixth equals d right and uh, on the other one we've got that uh, 30 kilometers per hour would be that same distance over t minus one sixth or written in this form we get 30 times t minus one sixth equals d but the distance he's traveling in all these things doesn't doesn't change just the speed and the time so these d's are the same d, it's the same distance, so they must be equal to each other. So I can write that 15 times t plus 1 sixth equals 30 times t minus 1 sixth. And uh, let's divide both sides by 15 here and get t plus 16 equals 2t minus 1 sixth. And um, okay, so multiplying out the brackets on the right hand side, I get 2t minus two sixths or one third. So adding, subtracting t from both sides, to give me a t here, and I'm gonna have one sixth plus one third here, uh, and a sixth plus a third, that's, um, sorry, that's uh, one sixth plus two sixths, which is three sixths or one half. So when he's going at uh, the speed to arrive on time, the journey takes him exactly one half an hour, one half of an hour, we can just work out that the speed we're looking for is is the distance over uh, one half. I could be haven't actually got the distance here yet, so um, I could work that out from one of these uh, equations up here uh, because we know t is a half. So let's just use this one and say thirty times what well, a half minus a sixth is a third. So thirty times a third is the distance. So the distance uh, here is equal to 10 then. And so the speed here we want is 10 divided by a half, which is the same as 10 times two. And so it's uh, 20 uh, kilometers per hour. And so the answer here is A. In question 23, it says, Sid is coloring the cells in this grid using the four colors, red, blue, yellow, and green, in such a way that any two cells that share a vertex are colored differently vertices, the vertex is just the corner points here. Um, he's already colored some of the cells as shown. What color will he use for the cell marked X? Is it red, blue, yellow, green, or maybe we can't be sure if there's more than one option. Okay, so tough question here. Um, the way I'm gonna approach it is as follows. I'm going to write in each of the squares here, um, the four different options. Okay, so red, blue, yellow, and green. Now I'm going to go through and I'm going to eliminate uh, the colors that can't be in different squares, right? So for example, this, if I look at this blue, nothing that shares a vertex with this can be blue. So I can eliminate blue from all of these, right? And I can do the same with the red here. Red can't be here or here. And for the yellow, yellow can't be here, 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 or here. And for the green, it can't be here or here. Okay, so now um, let's think about uh, this square here. Um, I've got yellow and green left. Now, if you think about these two, they've got red and green left and red and green. They're the only options here. They can only be red or green. So if one of them is red, then the other one is going to be green, right? So, uh, so there is... Uh, but you know, or it could be green and red this way around. But between them, they're going to have to be one green and one red. Because I can't have two greens or two reds next to each other. So actually, one of these is green, and this one here shares a vertex with both of these two squares. So actually, it can't be green, right? And so this one uh, must be yellow. 
and the same on the other side here, because one of these two has to be red, uh, this one can't be red, and this one must end up uh, being blue. And so I can kind of repeat this argument. So if th now this one's yellow, I know that uh, none of uh, these are going to be yellow. Um, so actually that means this one is green. Um, that means these can't be uh, green. And similarly on this side, uh, this one can't be blue, so this one must be red. Uh, so that means we can't have uh, blue uh, anywhere here, and we can't have red here or here. And now by the same argument, the fact that one of these has to be red or green means this one can't be red and this one can't be green. So we do get blue and yellow, meaning this one can't be blue, so it's red here, and this one can't be yellow, so it's green here. And then we just do this once more. Uh, so I can't have reds here or here, and I can't have blues here, 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 uh, because of these two. And on this side, I can't have um, yellow here. Oh, I suppose I didn't put red, blue, yellow, and green in the last one. That's the most important one in a way. Um, so I can't have yellow here, can't have uh, green here, can't have yellow here. Again, one of these have to be red or green. So this one can't be red. That one must be blue. And so the final one here must be red. And so the answer here is A. Perhaps for completeness here, I can fill in that this can't be green, so that one must be uh, yellow, and that one must be green. Um, so there we go. By a process of elimination, we've got to the final answer here that the square X must be red, and the answer is A. In question 24, we've got two ponds at the bottom of Gabrielle's garden, each containing frogs and toads. In one pond, the ratio of frogs to toads is 3 to 4. In the other pond, the ratio of frogs to toads is 5 to 6. Suppose there are 36 frogs in total, what then would be the largest possible total number of toads in the ponds? Okay, so let's think about this, right? Um, in pond one, uh, the frog to toad ratio is three to four. So it might be three frogs and four toads, it might be six frogs and eight toads, it might be nine frogs and 12 toads, etc. But we've got to be whole numbers of either frogs and toads, so we can't have any halves of frogs or halves of toads or anything like that. Um, so uh, it's uh, so the number of frogs has to be a multiple of three in this one, and the number of toads a multiple of four. And the same in pond two, okay, this same uh, ratio uh, of f frogs to toads in this one is five to six, so it might be five to six, it might be ten to twelve, it might be fifteen to eighteen, etc. Um, but I've got to be whole numbers, so these are the only options. And pond two helps us narrow it down pretty quickly, actually, because there aren't many options here. 20 to 24, 25 to 30, 32, 36, 35 to 42. And if there's only 36 frogs in total, we can't go beyond this, right? So um, now, if there are only five frogs in pond two, in pond one, there would be 31, right? If there were 10 frogs, there would be 26 to get to 36 in total. If there were 15, there would be 21 to get to 36 in total. 20, there'd be 16. 25, there'd be 11. 30, there'd be 6. 35, there'd only be 1. And what we've seen here is that the number of frogs has to be a multiple of 3, right? So the only numbers in this list um, that uh, gives give us multiples of 3 uh, here are 21, uh, and six. So it must be one of these two options. So it's either 30 to 36, right, and uh, in this one, and that would correspond to there being six frogs here and eight toads. So that would give me the total number of toads being 36 plus eight, which is 44. Or it could be this one, 15 to 18, that would leave 21 frogs, and that would be 28 toads here, multiplying the ratio by seven, so that would give me 28 plus 18, which is 46. They are the only two options, and so the answer here is B, 46. That's the largest possible total number of toads in the ponds. In question 25, we've got the room numbers of a hotel are all three digit numbers. The first digit represents the floor, and the last two digits represent the room number. Uh, so the hotel has rooms on five floors numbered one to five, and 35 rooms on each floor numbered NA1 to N35, where N is the number of the floor. So really, I think probably, possibly one of the hardest parts of this question is just working out what that information means. So it means on the first floor, right, N is one, so the room numbers are 101, 102, 103, etc., all the way up to 135. On the second floor, they're gonna be 201, 202, all the way up to 235, right? 
and the same on the third, the fourth, and the fifth floors. Um, and uh, that will be all of them, right? So uh, it says, in numbering all of the rooms, how many times will the digit two be used? Okay, well, let's think about the first floor uh, to, to begin with, right? So all ones in the first digits, there are no twos there. So we'll get twos from room 102, uh, and then also from 112, and then from uh, 120, uh, 121, 122, 123, 124, 125, 126, 127, 128, 129, and 132. They have twos in them. Okay, and so how many twos are there here? One, two, three, four, two in this one. So that's six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Okay, so there's fourteen twos used. To make the first floor it doesn't take as long to write that all out you might be able to count them by saying you know okay there's 10 rooms in the 20s plus an extra two here and three more but it doesn't take much longer to write them out if you want to be secure here um now the third fourth and fifth floors are identical to the first floor in terms of the numbers of twos right because a three being at the start instead of a one doesn't make any difference right so this is also going to have 14 twos 14 twos and 14 twos. Now in the 200s, there are going to be those same 14 twos, but also every single number starts with a two that wasn't there before. So all 35 of the numbers have a two. So we're going to have to have, have an extra 35 twos for that one. So the answer to this question is that there are 35 plus five times 14 twos, or you could just add 14 plus 14 plus 14 plus 49 plus 14 if you want to. Anyway, we get 35 plus uh, 70, and that's 105, and uh, that's the answer here, E. So I really hope that was useful. If you're preparing for maths challenges, either the Junior Maths Challenge or the Kangaroo or the Olympiad papers, don't forget about my online courses. Uh, I'll put the link in the description below. There's free courses there at the moment working through the Junior Maths Challenge from 2020 and 2021 with hints and solutions. and uh, there are other courses about the Junior Maths Challenge and preparing for maths challenges over there already and over the coming months and years I'm going to be making uh, a lot more content as well so sign up for the mailing list if you want to know about that or keep checking back here on YouTube uh, or over at the Maths Aurora's website.